was struggling with protecting neglected and abused children. State lawmakers had approved funding increases, but progress was slow. DCS says there's been a significant turnaround in dealing with backlog cases now. In March of 2015, there were more than 16,000. That number is down to 1,644. Now the agency is moving toward a new policy that would have caseworkers seek a court order before removing a child from a home, and legislators are considering similar bills. DCS Director Greg McKay is with me to talk about what could change. Does a move to get a court order to take a child out of a home potentially put that child in more danger because of the extra time involved? This will not affect that at all. And one of the reasons that we wanted to approach this, how we're approaching it very thoughtfully, was because we did not want to trigger a change in Arizona's uh, kind of paradigm when it comes to should should more children come into the system of government protection or should we err on the side of, of family rights and keeping kids in our own home regardless of the scenarios. We frankly don't care about that. I mean, the, the facts uh, of every situation should dictate our level of involvement. So we don't want a pendulum swing here. The current construct will remain in place, and that is when a child is in present danger now, our staff have the authority to take emergency temporary custody uh, with supervisory approval. And then after a few days, that goes to a judge for backup, so to speak. None of that will change. The, what we're proposing now is that in cases where children aren't in immediate peril, where they're going to suffer harm now if we don't take custody of them, we want to seek the, the support and insight of a judge present the judge with the facts of the case, present the judge with the steps we've taken to try to resolve the dangers, and if we feel we're going to take the child into state care, have the judge be the final signatory on those. Let me read you one quick line then from the internal memo. Just one sentence says this new process should not create anxiety among DCS staff. Is there a reason it would? What this sentence means is in an organization like ours where we've been completely working under duress for for a decade and now we're finally seeing some clarity and we're improving in so many different ways to tell staff we're going to have a practice shift right now that they're going to have to adapt to is stressful. The the agency reacts when they're going to be told to do something in a different way. So what the, that that sentence had two meanings. One was don't panic. We're not going to tell you to start doing this tomorrow. You don't have to adapt to a new practice tomorrow. Uh, and additionally, don't panic. This is a good thing because with a consensus-based decision-making model like we use, you know, the more people involved in that decision, the more teaming that goes into those critical decisions, the better for everybody. It is a double-edged sword when a caseworker has to make a removal decision or you know, the decision to leave a child in a house, they almost always will walk away and think, you know, did I make the right decision? Is there something else that could have been done? And then, of course, if, a, if something dreadful happens, uh, you know, then they blame themselves. So, you know, this is a way of protecting everybody. This, this is a good thing. And we, we wanted to make it clear to our organization that this isn't going to be a, a knee-jerk policy decision and a mandate sent down for them to go do something new. And Greg, I remember when you were named a couple of years ago to head this agency, and there were people that looked at your, your legal background, uh, law enforcement background, and right. they were wondering how that would work and what's been a social work kind of setting for the most part. How do you think now that you're a couple of years into the job that this has, has worked, that your experience has melded well with how the agency had been run, and maybe not even run, but the per the perception of it before? Right. And, and, you know, the perception was that I was going to come in and, and kind of uh, run this organization like a law enforcement organization, focusing on prosecuting crimes and prosecuting families rather than rebuilding families and strengthening families and delivering services and care. And frankly, people were way off base. I've cultivated a, a different culture around here that, that you would probably find if you asked around one where staff feel safe in their decision making, where they're not going to be cast out uh, to the public or to the media or fired when something bad happens. One where we as an organization took responsibility for their inability to succeed every day. We're doing our best and we're doing way better than we ever have before and, and it's paying off, but we still know there's a lot more to do. Uh, and frankly, it's got to be a community effort. We can't solve these problems. We're reacting to these problems. Uh, and we need help. So we're in the midst of, of the legislative session, and at least for the past few sessions, child safety had been 
a funding priority. Can you give me some idea of where you're at right now? Do you feel like you're on the same page? Obviously, the governor had his proposed budget. Are you on the same page with the legislature right now? Are they seeing the results you think they need to see in order to continue giving strong funding to your agency? You know, our legislator has been very supportive of us, whether it's been through policy reform or funding. Last year and the year prior to that and the year prior to that, uh, the department would arrive this time of year needing 50, 60, 70 million dollars to just finish this particular year's funding for four months. Um, you know, and, and they've supported us to get through these hard times. This year, you know, it's a different story. You know, this year our needs were about $5.2 million. And so you can see that's a pretty big gap. So the so most people would say, oh, my gosh, what does that mean for the people and the children that you're serving? Ha- have you cut costs? Have you not delivered services? To the contrary, we've done more. Uh, we've served more. We've served them better, and we've seen better outcomes. We've asked for a few additional things just to support growth. Like, for instance, how many more kids are leaving the system now than they were in the past? Well, many of them are leaving to adoption. And, you know, the state and the federal government pays uh, an adoption subsidy to kids adopted to families until they're 18. So, you know, those costs grow uh, as that population grows. So, you know, we obviously needed a little increase there and and also some of the work, you know, our governor wanting to support uh, relatives and grandparents and caring for for children uh, when they when they need to to be safely cared for uh, with our oversight. Greg McKay is director of the Department of Child Safety here in Arizona. And Greg, thank you for the time today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.